So last week, Star Wars Visions came out on Disney+, Plus, and I just finished watching the last episode a couple minutes ago. So now I want to talk about it. For anyone that doesn't know, this is a series of anime shorts based on Star Wars made by anime studios in Japan. Uh, they were pretty much given free reign. None of these are canon, so they don't have to fit in the rules and the history uh, of the like Star Wars timeline, but some of them choose to and some of them choose to just go a bit more wild. There's a lot of range here, so I wanted to rank all nine episodes, in my opinion, from the worst to the best. Kicking off the list in ninth place is Akakira, uh, the last episode of the season, so the one that I actually just watched a couple minutes ago, and I'm sad to say that I'm pretty bummed out that the series uh, ended on this note. I felt like the animation in this episode was pretty inconsistent. There just wasn't a whole lot that I really liked about this episode, sadly. Two comedic relief characters I enjoyed more than I thought to. I actually got some laughs out of them and the villain was pretty alright, but everything else I was just kind of left me wanting. Coming in in eighth place is The Twins. Uh, and the art on this one I thought was very nice. Uh, there were some shots that were really cool to look at, especially uh, they paid a lot of uh, homage to some stuff from both the original trilogy and from the sequel trilogy. That's also kind of what really held this episode back for me. Uh, it really felt like the people who were creating it were less focused on creating something original and unique and just so excited by the fact that they had the license to do Star Wars, so they really just wanted to do Star Wars. They had C-3PO, but like, B blah blah, it was, it was C-3PO. And they had R2-D2, but uh, it was R-Duo. The plot is that the, the two twins are both supposed to be the dark side, but one is just clearly Luke, and at no point was I like, oh, he was trained in the dark side. Like, no, he's the hero, just look at him. And there was an X-Wing in there for no reason, even though it didn't really make sense. It was just a little too familiar with not enough originality. Uh, I, that being said, I didn't hate it, but uh, it just didn't really pique too much of my interest. At number seven is T-O-B-1. Now that I'm actually saying it out loud, it does sound like T-O-B-1, just the Jedi, Obi-Wan, like Kenobi. I wonder if that was on purpose. And I didn't dislike it, uh, but I didn't feel like there was a whole lot of depth to either the story or to the exploration of like the lore of Star Wars in general. It felt pretty like fun, safe, I think this one would be a great one to show kids, uh, and I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more as a kid, but it didn't really uh, wow me in any, in any way. At number six is Lop and Ocho. This one I thought would have been a really good, like, pilot for a whole, like, season or series of episodes following these characters and delving into them and going on a full story, but as it was on its own, I feel like there wasn't enough time for me to connect to the characters in the way that I felt like I could have, uh, but there was just a lot of, like, story and conflict between these characters happening, and it didn't really give me a whole lot of time to, like, get to know them, and I know these are shorts, but, like, as you'll see uh, a bit later on in the list. I feel like some of them did it a lot better. As it was, I think this would be a good pilot to a show to get me to really be into these characters and the conflicts between them, but as it was uh, with it just being on its own and with absolutely zero reason to believe that we will ever see these characters again, it's a little disappointing in that way. At number five is Tatooine Rhapsody, which uh, if you've seen the uh, trailer for uh, Visions as a whole, you've seen the shot of like Boba Fett flying along. Yeah, this is the one with that. Unlike the twins, I thought this one used the like nods to uh, other Star Wars media a lot more in a 
fun way because it wasn't the whole story wasn't like built upon that it was just oh we're here at this place and we get to see a shot like that and that's cool and oh Boba Fett's in it but it's not like I don't know the story is not about him they still have their own original characters uh, it's a lot of fun it's nothing that I'm like whoa that was absolutely incredible and it's the least uh, Star Wars like story out of this list but I thought as an anime it was uh, lots of fun and uh, I just think that this one had the most fun with being in the Star Wars universe they were really just like we're here to have a good time and that's about it and I think it worked! At number four is The Elder, and I think this one is the easiest to just slide right on into canon. It easily could take place at roughly the same time as The Phantom Menace. Uh, probably not exactly the same time, but like a little bit before, in the period of time where the Jedi are like, oh, the Sith are gone, we're just going around and protecting the galaxy. Uh, it kind of had a Phantom Menace-esque vibe to it, in my opinion, in that the Master reminded me a lot of Qui-Gon Jinn. He was very wise. He had some great lines throughout there that I was like, oh shoot, this is some like good wisdom. Really lets the episode have like a clear message and moral that uh, the Master is teaching the younger and less experienced apprentice and uh, it didn't feel like shoehorned in. It, it was a message about like power and uh, how you use it. Uh, a good analogy of like the light side versus the dark side in terms of their philosophy on power. And uh, yeah, it was uh, fun. Definitely could very easily be canon. It doesn't break any canon rules. Uh, so it was fun to see, uh, but the next three I thought were a lot more original with what they did with Star Wars. So that brings us to third place, The Duel, heavily takes inspiration from samurai films, which of course is where George Lucas took his original inspiration for the original Star Wars trilogy. So it kind of comes full circle in that way. And this one is absolutely just a samurai story with Jedi, but they do it really well for a 13 minute short. The main character is interesting and we don't get all of the answers about him, but uh, it kind of makes you really want to know what's going on, what his full story is, but without making anything feel incomplete for the story. They, it's a very tight story. Uh, wraps up uh, very nicely and I thought the fight was extremely satisfying especially that's the only lightsaber fight I can think of where the battle is not won through just pure like swordsman skills or through like force trickery or something like that it's just it comes down to a battle of wits and the person who wins outwits their opponent and I think that's a really cool thing to see in Star Wars it's something that uh, I think anime does really well. I, I don't, uh, as a disclaimer, I don't watch too much anime, but uh, it's something that I really enjoy out of uh, the ones that I have seen. Like, it's done a lot in JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, uh, and I thought it was done nicely here, and just something cool to see in a Star Wars story, and something that I hope to see in some future Star Wars stories. Just like some, a different take on a lightsaber fight. Excuse you? What a weird siren. In second place is the ninth Jedi. I love the protagonist of this episode. Kara is a great protagonist to follow. She's super likable, definitely has a journey that she goes on both in this episode, but also like you can see more out of her and I want to see more out of her. I thought that the speeder chase was just incredible. I had a giddy smile on my face just watching the coolness unfold before me. And like uh, uh, the prior thing that I talked about, this one I, I think would be a great pilot to like a series uh, where it really ends on like the story is not complete. And that's the only thing that I think I could say against it is that the story is not complete when it ends and like it really feels like the uh, the studio that, that that did this one was trying to say like, hey, Disney, uh, we want to do a Star Wars anime, so uh, let us do that. But uh, they didn't actually like complete their short, just like assuming that might be the only thing that we get to see out of these characters. So 
that was a little upsetting, but everything else about this I thoroughly enjoyed. And that brings us to the top spot in first place. My favorite out of the bunch was The Village Bride. Oh, I thought this was enchanting and wonderful to, to look at and to explore the, the characters and the world that we're on. Uh, it really dove into like the mystical aspect of like the nature and the force. The character arcs and uh, their journeys and their emotions and the story as a whole I thought felt uh, very earned in just a short amount of time. I thought that this was the best overall like short episode. Like you can watch it and you can love it and I desperately want to see more of the main character going off on adventures but uh, I don't feel like it's necessary, like with some of the others. Like, the studio clearly was like, we know we only have this much time, so we're going to make a complete beginning, middle, end, and we're going to have a full journey for our characters to go on, and we're going to make it stunning the whole way, and just really explore some of the, the depths of the Force and of the Star Wars world in general, and just have a lot of fun with it. Uh, I don't know that this one perfectly would fit into, uh, like, canon as it's established, but I really wanted to, and it's definitely part of my head canon now. I, ugh, oh, watching this episode, I was like, is this one going to be my favorite? I think it might be hard to top. And the Ninth Jedi came close, but, uh, this one still stayed at my number one. So that's my list of all nine episodes of Star Wars Visions, with seven studios making nine different Star Wars stories, none of which are canon, and all of which are trying to do something new. Uh, I think that it is safe to say that everybody's list could be different, uh, and I think that's the really cool part about what uh, this series is bringing to Star Wars as a whole. While the nerd part of me wishes that uh, some of these stories were canon, uh, I really enjoyed the exploration of the Star Wars universe. I want to see more stuff like this, and I also want to know what you thought of the nine episodes that we got. Uh, do you agree with my list? Uh, what does your list look like? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and have a good week.